Hey guys, it's Junior. Welcome back to the channel here at Horsepower Warehouse. It's been a few weeks since I've been able to talk with you guys and we have so many cool cars to share and some significant shop upgrades and progress as well. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. First and foremost, I wanted to start in the shop here because everything has been moved around. A lot of things have been cleaned up. We are trying to improve efficiency here and get the maximum that we can out of our shop. So everything is coming along nicely. I'm, I'm very particular about being cleanly about you know, all of our procedures. Me and Sean, we're both sticklers about doing things the right way and you know, ap approaching it like professionals. Um, speaking of a professional job, Sean is over here putting the heads back on the 65 here. We're gonna completely assemble and seal the engine before it goes through the pressure washing. And we're, of course, we're going to paint the entire engine bay and recondition everything as we go. But the heads are back from Steve Keach, so we're good to go on this one. You can see we have a complete parts lot over here, including carpet kit, bunch of interior parts, so on and so forth. The 64 here has been up and down probably three dozen times since I've last talked with you guys. Some really significant fiberglass repair going on in this car. Um, of course, we have the frame scooched up under there right now because we had the 65, we're getting it on the lift. But this car, it's a doozy in terms of fiberglass repair. It really deserves its own full video because once we get into the rocker and all of that, that's something I really want to spend some time to explain with you guys how intensive it is once a car was damaged in the fashion this one was. My fuel injected car is, it's clean, it's coming along. We're making slow progress on it. We have all the parts laid out in front of it. We are kind of doing a re-inventory because we're about to bite back into this project and dive into it and get her done. The reason we are able to do so is because we are on the the final, I don't even know what to call it, probably 5% on this car. Of course, you can see the rear window is out, but otherwise this car is completely done. You can see my customer's Nassau 66 is here. Again, significant progress has been made with this car. Uh, the complete carpet kit is in. You can see, uh-oh, I'm trade secrets. You can see my 3M adhesive. I actually use three different types of adhesive when I do my carpet kits. So. You can see one of them that's poking out there. Um, carpet's in, dash is in, new glass is in. You can see I'm fitting the new trim pieces. I had to replace this piece with a brand new one only because the original parts were not able to be polished out to my standards. Um, so a lot of interior progress on this one. You can see the new harness is laid out under there. You can see all of the sound deadening going all the way up to the dashboard into the firewall. You can also see new harness poking through in the taillights there. I'm not gonna install any exterior fixtures until Randy comes through and wet sands and buffs this car. So that's where I'm at right now is I have it scheduled for Randy to come through and cut and buff this car. He does four stages of cutting and three stages of buffing. You guys, if, if you've watched my channel, you've seen the, the magician that Randy is with the paint. Let's not, Let's not skip anything here. The 65, we've been running this one since it's come back. Of course, it's got the knockoffs. Um, the red lines with the radials now looks fantastic. It has been aligned, so we've been running the car. In doing so, we have found that the carburetor really should go back to guaranteed carb. It's just not running the way we would have a preference for. We, we've done all the adjustments. Sean's the man with a Holly, so um, we've done everything we can do on our end. It, it, is going back to guaranteed car because as their name suggests, they do guarantee their work. Um, so it's gonna be rebuilt. The compressor has the clutch off of it because again, brand new sand and comp compressor from Classic Auto Air, it needed reshimmed. it was screaming. Um, it's just needed adjustment. And this is not something that they say will happen. I've, it's something we've experienced before, so we know how to handle it, but 
most people would just send the, take it all back apart, send the compressor back to Classic Auto Air. They would send another compressor and then hope for the best. We know what the issue is here, so we're gonna correctly shim it because we do have the Sandin SD7 H15 shims. So we know what we're doing, we'll handle that. So this car is coming out absolutely fantastic. This one, I wanna spend a little bit of time and just show you how it's come out. Sean has spent a lot of time in the engine bay and I think he's done an absolutely fantastic job. This of course is a 59 Corvette. The wheels and tires that are on it right now are black gloss with 66 caps on it. My father has a preference for the 66 caps, so that's what we put on there. I wanted the bias ply tires. He wanted to put radials on it. I think the bias ply maintains that C1 look. It looks like an old school California hot rod. And that's, man, this thing, it really checks a lot of boxes for me right now in its configuration. Now, if you don't like the wheels and tires, it's literally five lug nuts to take it off and replace them. And in fact, my father has ordered custom wheels for this car. They are several months out. This is the tires that he was gonna put on it, 19 inch red lines, low profile. So you can see what his intentions were with the car. I convinced him to let me mount these on there because I really like this look. Um, I think, man, that's the way the car should be. So it was appealing to him because I was able to get it on the floor so we can wet sand it and buff it and finish the car. You can see all the custom work on the, all the pinstriping and panels on the trunk. I mean, functional Z06 ducts. You can see in the rear here, it's got center exhaust. Rumor has it that under just the right conditions on deceleration, it does shoot a little bit of a flame. I'm not gonna confirm or deny it, but you know, rumors have it. And then this, holy moly. I don't know where Sean is. He's hiding right now because he don't like camera, but he did a good job. Good job, Sean. And this car runs really, really nice. This is a ZZ4 Chevrolet crate motor. If you're not familiar, um, you can see it's got air conditioning. Underneath it's got rack and pinion. It's a full coilover suspension front and rear. It's got an Art Morrison rear with four link. It is a, if I'm not mistaken, a, no it is, it's a nine inch, a Ford nine inch Mosier complete rear end. It's got, what type of brakes? It's aftermarket. I think it's Bayer, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but nonetheless, it's not Willwood, it's Bayer. But it's got complete aftermarket front and rear disc brakes cool pinstriping, bumper delete, you know, it's, it was done really, really nicely. I have a, I have a per personal preference for bumpers, but this car looks really nice. So it's coming along. It's not a hundred percent complete yet, but it's in the 95% range. We're doing final tinkering on it. Of course, the car needs wet sanded and buffed. Um, it looks really good, but it can look fantastic. It can look like that car. So that's where we're heading with that. Let me take you over. Oh, no, 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 no. I warned you guys. Um, I, I apologize. It's been a few weeks, so we have a lot to cover, and I don't want to skip anything. So look at what we have here. New edition. And probably $80,000 worth of a parts lot. So this is something that literally brought a tear to my eye when I unpacked it. This couple really did their research. He's a NCRS judge, so I mean, this is kind of what, you know, it's indicative of uh, several years of research on the car. He knows the 63 platform very, very well. He equipped me with an $80,000 parts lot I'm gonna say that, you know, that's probably being conservative um, to do this car. This is a saddle tan on saddle tan 63 split. So it's getting a complete frame off restoration. It looks probably, I know what you guys are thinking right now. Um, it doesn't need a restoration. Junior, what are you doing? Well, uh, the paint is not nearly on par with what we produce out of here. The gaps aren't even close to on par on what we produce on our cars. So really in order to fix all of the body blemishes and all of the 
underlaying work that needs done, you need to do a complete paint job. Um, but when it gets down to it, you know, the, if you want a perfect car, everything needs to be addressed. So, I mean, if you nitpick every little piece, it, everything would need to be taken off and either restored or replaced. I mean, uh, this car deserves its own video. Again, I've been saying that over and over, but I want to explain to you guys exactly why this car justifies needing a complete and thorough restoration. But coming up, like and subscribe. If not, you're gonna miss out. How about that for a proposition? Um, we have so much to get through. 57 here. This one came in, a uh, comment, if you like the Resto Mod 57 look, I really do. I really do. I'm, I don't know about the brakes, you know, or the wheels. Uh, the brakes are fantastic. But let me light it up. I want to show you guys a, a trick that this car is hiding underneath. It's actually got two pretty significant tricks. You'll notice that there is an absence of rear brakes in this car. Well, it's not because they don't exist. It is simply because they are inboard. And there is this crazy setup. Yes. So, independent rear suspension, coilovers front and rear. You'll notice the side exhaust. Really clean interior. I can see some, what looks like Dakota digital gauges. Smaller steering wheel, aftermarket column with tilt. Otherwise a completely and thoroughly restored interior. As I mentioned, coilovers front and rear, so the car does have a really good stance. But it's hiding another trick. Da, 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 da. An LS. Oh, the hood's got to go all the way up. Aha. I remember that with the 57s. If you don't go all the way up on the hood struts, they don't like to hold the springs like to be in the all the way in position. So in LS1, you can see modern air conditioning, the condenser in the front, big aluminum radiator, power brakes, obviously power steering down there. Man, really, really cool car. I don't know, I should backtrack. I don't know if this is, what variant of LS this is. I have not looked through any of the paperwork. This could be an LS1, three, or six, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know if this is a cathedral port or a square port head car. I haven't dug that far into it. If you're interested in this car though, Senior is the guy to talk to about that information. I was just impressed with the build here um, because I like, I like their style, I like their flavor. That came out nice. Speaking of came out nice, my Measure Schmidt. This is another vehicle that I've not shown you guys since we've started working on it. Um, this one's pretty much complete. So you can see we have the bubble top on it. Thank you, Drew Mango Bay Metalworks. He is a polycarbonate, I'm not gonna call him an artist. He's a car guy like us. He builds really high-end hot rods and does metalwork, but he came through and educated myself and Sean on the correct way to approach a polycarbonate fitment like this. This was a really, really expensive bubble top that did not fit perfect to the frame. Came with instructions that say trim to fit. I was going to attempt it. I was gonna dive right in. I, um, I've never done it before though. So I was, as you can imagine, a little bit anxious about it. Drew, uh, Sean put me in contact with Drew who came through here and he absolutely knocked it out of the park. So thank you again, Drew at Mango Bay. He is the man for like real custom metal and poly and just weird stuff like that. He is the guy locally here. Um, white walls, you can see the interior has been really freshened up. Looks great now, the correct strap. I mean, we went through and just kind of massaged the engine bay a little bit and man, what a, a neat vehicle. Another set of neat vehicles I have here comment down below guys. I have the battle of the 55 trucks, Ford versus Chevy. Let's walk around both before you comment because I want to give them both a fair chance. These are both really cool trucks. So 
Chevy versus Ford. What's interesting is they both were done in the same fashion. Aftermarket interior done really nice. You know, aftermarket bed done really nice. Lowered stance, aftermarket wheels. Hmm. I don't know, guys. They're both really cool trucks. I mean, I credit is given where credit is due. Um, they were both fantastic builds. Side pipes. I kind of like the Chevy personally. The interior is, again, completely aftermarket and, and done really, really nice. Yes. I don't know. I would drive either. Comment down below. I guess my opinion really doesn't matter here um, because I'm not a, a buyer for either of these trucks. I am looking for a car and I'll explain to you guys shortly my saga there. Here's another cool truck. I think this one's a 65, but this is actually a truck on top of a Crown Victoria. So it's got a complete 4.6 interceptor Crown Vic chassis, engine, transmission, all of that. So the wheelbase of the truck matches a Crown Vic and they put it on. So it's basically, it's a new old truck. It drives just like a modern vehicle as you would expect, but it has that vintage look. So another cool build here. I got a trio of neat trucks. Two motorcycles came in. I know this isn't a motorcycle channel, but I like sharing anything that is, uh, you know, gas powered. This is what we're interested in is obscure, super, super clean um, stuff like this. This is an 84 Ninja. I believe this was used on Top Gun or not the actual bike, but this is the spec of bike that Tom Cruise was riding, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, so really cool there. We have acquired an Expedition EL, if you know anyone that's looking for one of those. And a 23 VET. This is a convertible, Spider convertible, whatever you want to call it. My favorite part about this in the back, Corvette sent 70 years, so 53 to 23, right there on the back below the camera. I thought that was a really neat touch on this car. I am very salty with Chevrolet dealers right now because they treated me personally very poorly. Um, in my attempts to order a new Camaro ZL1 1LE. I'm not, again, the purpose of this channel isn't to call out people that have wronged me. I'm the type that I'll just never do business with your company again. So I'm very salty with Chevrolet right now. I personally will probably never buy a new Chevrolet again in my entire life. Um, and that's coming from a person that owns a new Duramax and I build, I build Corvettes for a living. I wanted to buy either a new Corvette or the Camaro that I had specced out. Um, I was treated just incredibly wrong by a local Chevrolet dealer after doing months of research of who to get the correct allocations from and uh, so on and so forth. I thought I had made the right choice. They weren't here in town. It was quite a drive to even get to them to spec the car, but they were supposedly the person to get the allocation and it was just a bunch of loops. It shouldn't be that way. When you want to spend $80,000 on a car, you shouldn't have to jump through any loops. Just my opinion. Comment down below, what do you think? So another really great aspect of this car is it has been allocated. I have it here. <laughs> so there is no allocations. There is no wait time. Um, it just is what it is. We put a price tag on the car. It's available today. You wanna drive it home tomorrow, bring a big stack of cash for senior. Um, actually don't do that because he doesn't like cash. But nonetheless, wire the money and we'll, you could drive the car away. Um, C7 here. So we have kind of like the driver spec car and then the race spec. Both automatics. Um, this one has Magnaflow exhaust. This one's like the flashy, you know, red, silver stripes, red calipers, just chrome. This would be a cool, like, uh, set of cars to buy, you know, for like the wife and the husband and then what really ends up happening is the wife ends up stealing this car and the husband's stuck with that one because you know how that works. We have another 57 here. 
comment down below, what is your flavor on the 57s? Would you prefer to have that Resto Mod one that I just showed you, or this clean original build? Really nice Bel Air, true to form, still on bias plies. Mm -hmm. Let's take a peek on the interior. Looks like an off-white interior, cream or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. We have <laughs> a full house, don't we? Well, thank you guys so much. 20 minutes. This is literally double the amount of video that I like to put out because I don't want to bore you guys. But thank you guys so much for joining me. We have a lot of cars being delivered. So I had to make this video today just to make sure that we covered everything before a whole new shipment of stuff comes in because that's going to be a whole nother video. And then as I mentioned throughout this video, we have several things that we really need to dive deeper into. Comment down below if there's anything else you want me to cover because I always like suggestions for content. I'm trying to put out what you guys want to see. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Until next time, take care.